To start our overview of woodwind instruments, we're going to go back to the mouthpieces which we discussed earlier. The mouthpieces are incredibly important in how they make sound and in the resulting tone color of each instrument. There are three subgroups within the woodwind section based on the type of mouthpiece the instrument has. We have the aerophones, the single reeds, and the double reeds. And we're going to start our discussion with the aerophones or flute family. The flute is the earliest known instrument. You can find the evidence of flutes in the art of many different cultures. The modern flute that we see in today's orchestras is known as the transverse flute, which just means that you blow into it from the side. Let's listen to a sample of the flute to see what it sounds like. This particular piece is from Peter and the Wolf, a wonderful piece by Sergei Prokofiev that matches different instruments with different characters in the story. In this music, the flute represents the bird. Do you think it's a good choice? I do. The timbre of the flute is definitely very bird-like, and it changes a bit depending on whether you're playing lower or higher. So in the upper range, the flute sounds more piercing and shrill, while in the lower range, the notes are fuller and a little bit more mellow. As with the string instruments, there are different sizes of flutes with different possibilities of sound. In this picture, we see the concert flute next to a piccolo. Piccolo is another one of those Italian words which means small. Since it's smaller than the flute, that makes sense. Can you guess how it will sound compared to the flute? Let's listen and find out. surprise there, the smaller piccolo sounds even higher and more piercing than the flute, which of course is why it was able to be used on the battleground to direct troops. Pretty awesome stuff. There are also bigger versions of the flute. In this picture, we can see the concert flute next to an alto flute. That's a pretty long instrument, so sometimes you're going to see a curved version so that smaller people with shorter arms can play it. The alto flute takes the lovely lower register of the flute even lower. Let's listen and see what you think. The sound of the alto flute is even more mellow than the lower register of the regular concert flute. To me, it sounds like the perfect instrument for new age music. It's very relaxing to listen to. Now, of course, you can continue to add extra length and bends to the flute until the player can no longer hold them up. I love this picture. You look at it and go, what instrument is that? And you're like, uh, I don't know, is that a saxophone? It's a... Is that a, okay, he's blow, oh, it's a flute. Oh my gosh, it's a flute. It's a humongous contrabass flute. Pretty, pretty amazing that there's such a thing as a bass flute. Okay, now that we've checked out the aerophones, let's move on to the single reed family. As you can imagine, the change in the mouthpiece brings a tremendous change in the sound. We're going to start the single reed section with the clarinet. As with the flute, the clarinet has distinct sounds in its different registers. Let's listen to another section of Peter and the Wolf 
and see if we can guess what the clarinet is supposed to represent in this story. I'll give you a hint. It's a pet. Okay, can you guess what animal that was? It's the cat. In fact, it's a very nervous cat who is sneaking around and then gets surprised. And I think this clip is a great example of the different registers of the clarinet. In the lower notes, it's very full, but it gets much thinner as it goes higher. As with the flutes, there are many different sizes of clarinets to get a full range of its particular sounds. If you check out this illustration, you can see a lot of different clarinets. Right here, we see the B-flat clarinet that we just listened to. If you say to someone, I play the clarinet, this is probably what you're talking about. The slightly smaller clarinet is the A clarinet, which you might guess plays a little higher. If we go a little larger, we have the alto clarinet. And then larger than that is the contra alto clarinet. Next is the bass clarinet, and even larger than that is that funky looking thing, the contra bass clarinet. That's a lot of clarinets to choose from. Let's listen to the bass clarinet. <laughs> and you can hear that the bass clarinet can go very, very low indeed. Now you might recall that I mentioned a certain member of the woodwind family that was not made of wood. Do you remember what it was called? Yes, it's the saxophone. The saxophone is a much younger instrument than the rest of the woodwind family. In fact, it was invented in 1840, so that's pretty recent. This picture is the alto saxophone, which has a very similar mouthpiece to the clarinet. And with that similar mouthpiece, you're going to get a similar sound, but it definitely has its own unique sound. Let's see what you think. from this sound sample that the saxophone has a slightly edgier sound than the clarinet but can also be wonderfully mellow. And of course, there are different sizes. The one that we just listened to is the alto saxophone. You can go smaller with the soprano saxophone or larger with the tenor and then even a little bit larger with the baritone sax. And the baritone sax has a little loop in it to give it some extra length. While the saxophone was created to be a part of the classical symphony, it's really become more of a staple in the wind symphony and the marching band, and of course, jazz. In my opinion, the best place to hear the unique sound of all of the saxophones is in the big band music of the 1930s and 40s. to the single reed instrument family versus the aerophone family, you've heard a huge difference in the sound between them. 
do you think that the sound will change a lot if we add another reed? The mouthpiece of the double reed family is different from the single reeds. Instead of one reed vibrating against the mouthpiece, there are two reeds that vibrate against each other. The oboe is the smallest of the double reed family, and it has a very unique sound that is definitely different from the single reed family. That particular piece is from a movie soundtrack by the amazing Ennio Morricone. It really illustrates the haunting quality of the oboe very well. I once tried to play a friend's oboe in high school and it sounded like a demented duck, but in skilled hands, the oboe is really beautiful. Okay, let's move on to the next largest instrument in the double reed family, the English horn. It's slightly larger than the oboe and has a curved pipe between its reeds with a bulb on the end. Since it's a little bit bigger than the oboe, what do you think it's going to sound like? Let's find out. difference between the English horn and the oboe? I think it's just a little bit more edgy than the oboe, but it's also very easy to mix them up, especially where their ranges overlap. The next largest double reed is the bassoon. It is much larger than the oboe and the English horn. In Peter and the Wolf, the bassoon represents the grandfather. Let's listen to it and see if that works. <laughs> see the grandfather shaking his finger at Peter after he's disobeyed. It's definitely very appropriate. We could hear that the timbre of the bassoon has some of the edginess of the English horn, and that gives it a very unique sound in the orchestra. Now as large as the bassoon is, it's not the largest double reed. Add curve and some length and you've got the contrabassoon. This picture shows how it compares to the bassoon. You can see how it loops back in on itself to add length, and it has a stand for the floor. And of course, the sound is even lower and bassoonier, if that makes sense. saying it sounded bassoonier? Okay, that wraps up the section on woodwinds. Stay tuned for the next lesson on the brass section. <laughs>